You want one word? An Amiga? Right on. <laughs> Amazing Amiga, that's it. I was going to say awesome, but that sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> radical, and it's certainly a radical machine. Awesome. One word? Amiga. Friend. You know, I mean, that's what it means. The Amiga has always belonged to the Dreamers. It was invented by an eclectic band of individuals led by Jay Minor, a group that became close friends with an active sense of humor, an overactive work ethic, and an almost childlike enthusiasm. They set out to make their dream computer, one they'd like to use themselves, real cool, real fast, with lots of power and lots of wissy demos. The team was brilliant, creative. Without a thought, they abandoned the stodgy conventions that said computers are computers and toys are toys. And whether you believe the Amiga is a game machine or a business machine, there's no denying that the combination of power and graphics was a revolution in computing. Only now are the other computers beginning to meet the standards that the Amiga inventors set almost 10 years ago. That original Amiga team created the machine. They brought to it their unique personality and put out something totally new. Their story is unique. It tells of entrepreneurship, passion, trust, courage, and friendship. It's a very personal story. It belongs to Jay and Dave and Carl, the four Bobs, and all the others at Amiga. It can't be told by anybody else, so when we decided to record the story, we brought the original members together, collected their personal photographs, and borrowed their home film footage. Here, in their own words, is the story of the making of the Amiga. Well, it was in 1982, uh, a friend of mine that I used to work with at Atari uh, came to me and said, hey, Jay, let's start a new company. I'm tired of this one. And uh, I said, well, fine. Uh, I said, uh, I'll do the chips for it, and I'll be, your vi be the vice president if I can do the chips my way. Uh, my original vision of the machine was as a, a low-cost entry into the computer field via the uh, video game area. Video games at that time were really hot, and all our investors wanted was a video game. But uh, I wanted something that could be expanded into a real computer. They, we got a uh, vice president out from back east called Dave Morse, a uh, president rather, called Dave Morse, uh, who was vice president of Tonka Toys, came out to be our president, and started a little company over on Scott Boulevard in Santa Clara called High Toro. And uh, High Toro later got its name changed to Amiga Corporation. <laughs> High Toro, High Toro, which is interesting. High meaning big, great, grand. I, I don't, I Toro can't... meaning <laughs> bull. bull. <laughs> First thing I thought of when I saw that name was um, lawnmowers. And so I think that they, when they talked to other people about it, they got the same impression too, that it was a lawnmower company. So they changed it. And uh, Amiga Corporation was what it was when I joined. And Amiga was... Uh, they chose the name Amiga because they were looking for something that meant friend or friendly. But in Silicon Valley, there is an extremely high concentration of computer companies. And there's a lot of spying that goes on all the time and people trying to take ideas from other people and trying to outdo one another. And so it's really important to conceal what you're doing and to, you know, at least to not broadcast around the things that you're working on, especially and with the project that we're working on with the ideas that we had, we thought that we had a gold mine in our hands and that we were going to be able to do something really major with this idea. So we had to hide it as much as we could for as long as we could. And so they set the company up to the real world to look as if it was Hi Toro and then Amiga Computer, a company that made game peripherals. And the industry said, what's that new company over there on Scott Avenue? And they went and they looked with their binoculars in the window and they saw, oh, joysticks, no problem, okay. <laughs> when I first interviewed at Amiga, it was very interesting. I was there to do a game machine. I got hired to work on, you know, the next greatest game machine that's going to be the greatest thing. And, uh, and I'm talking with everyone, and I interviewed with everyone, and I, I talk with the hardware guys, and I talk with them, and I'm... <clears throat> 
talking with Dave Morse, and he's giving me the spiel, you know, oh, the next greatest machine, and oh, it's going to be wonderful, take the game industry by storm. And then I, I made my way back to Jay's office, and I'm talking with him to get a feel for the real, you know, what the hardware's really like and stuff like that. And he's got a whiteboard behind him while we're talking. And it's, you know, RAM and CPU and stuff like that. But there's this one little box that comes off in the corner that has KBD PRT <laughs> on it. It's like, Keyboard port on a game machine? Hmm. There's this other little box down here. EXT, DRV, external drive on a game machine? So I go back, I talk more and say, game machine, right? Game machine. Yeah, 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 game machine. It's gonna be a little. I go, Jay, game machine? Says, hey, uh, game machine, uh, game machine. <laughs> I was the first software guy that Bob Paraso hired. And um, when I was hired, I was hired as manager of entertainment software because I'd worked in the video game business. And um, I soon found out there are not a lot of starving startup companies that want to put aside all their other projects and work on a vaporware computer, which was, <laughs> totally was back then. And um, plus, also, I found out I'd much rather hack code than, uh, than um, you know, try to get people to, other people to hack code. 